obviously a cinema camera gives you the flexibility of changing out different lenses. But how can that give us more creative control as directors, as filmmakers? While you think about that, let me go over a few common terms that so we're on the same page so everything else makes sense. The first is field of view. So what is that? Field of view is simply what the combination of your lens and camera actually see in frame. That's field of view. To put to make this clear, a zoom lens. We all know what zooming is. Zooming puts us closer to our subject. Well, technically, when you even on a phone, if you zoom, you're changing the focal length of the lens, technically. So what is focal length? Focal length, here's how it works in, in a nutshell. There's a whole science to this, but light enters your lens in parallel, light rays, and then they are converged, they're bent and stuff, and they converge and are projected onto the camera's sensor. Well, there's a measurement in there from like point of bending to, con or no, from convergence to, I think, projection of the sensor that is measured, and that distance is measured in millimeters. And so that's what the, that's the focal length of the lens. So for example, this is a 24 millimeter lens, and this is a 50 millimeter lens. The 50 millimeter lens puts us closer to our subject. This is a wider lens, so it puts us further away from our subject. And, it, and these do more than that, which we'll talk about in a second. Another thing that lenses affect is depth of field. Every image has an exact, like a focal plane where you have 100% precise focus. And then things before or behind that can still appear to be in focus, but they're, they're not 100% in focus. And this is called your depth of field. So if you have a very deep depth of field, that means you know, I could lean forward or backwards and still seem like I'm in focus. If I have a shallow depth of field, if I move too far forward, then everything starts going soft. Lenses play into this. It's not the only thing, we'll talk about that more. Uh, the other thing that goes hand in hand with depth of field is bokeh. What's bokeh? Well, it comes from the Japanese language and it means to blur. And so those portrait shots from our phones where it tries to blur the background, it's trying to create bokeh. It's trying to look like that beautiful depth of field stuff. You can overuse depth of field, by the way, as filmmakers, um, but back to bokeh. The quality of your lens affects the quality of your bokeh. Really nice lenses have a very creamy, beautiful bokeh that people love, that filmmakers love, and then a cheap lens isn't gonna have the same look. Let's get back to the question about how these lenses can give us more creative control as directors, as storytellers, right? So let's start with this one. This is a wide angle lens. It's a 24 millimeter lens and I'm gonna get, I'm just giving range, general ranges here, but like a 12 to 24 millimeter lens focal length is considered wide angle. Not only do these move us away from the subject so we see a bigger, a wider field of view, but they also introduce distortion and that can be used creatively. For example, look at this shot of Ghost holding the gun. This isn't an extreme wide angle lens. I was probably shot on this 24, but you can see the, the gun is just a little larger, a little more ominous than it would be in real life. And you can use that to your advantage. You could put a wider angle lens on and make it even larger. Something else wide angle lenses can do is they can make something running towards camera appear faster. So if someone's running and you want it to seem faster than it is, shoot them on a wide angle and that's gonna do that for you. Uh, something else wide angle will do regarding the field of view is it'll let you shoot in tight spaces. For example, there's scenes in Reckoning that I could not have shot if I didn't have this 24 millimeter lens. I'm shooting in old houses, cabins, barns, and sometimes I can only be so far away from my subject, and so I needed this wide angle to get the field of view that I wanted for the scenes. Okay. This is a 50 millimeter lens, and the range from like 35 to 60 something, whatever it is, is considered more, less distortion, more of what the human eye actually sees. I read that Alfred Hitchcock was a fan of the 50 millimeter lens for his films. And so when would I use this? Well, one of the times is if I'm shooting close-ups of actors and I have the distance to back up from them because this puts you closer, right? It kind of zooms you closer then I would use this for less distortion, for just a more accurate, beautiful look of that actor, right? 
just keep that in mind. That range is sort of a norm, more normal look. It's going to put you a little closer to the talent, and it's going to carve out a little less background, which I'll talk about more in a second. Uh, like the 70 to 200 millimeter range, that rough range, are con those are considered long lenses. So what do those do for you? Well, they zoom you in even closer, and they also introduce a different type of distortion. They compress the space in a different way. For example, let's say, let's say you framed up someone sitting on a couch, and they had their feet out, and their feet were on a stool. Well, if you shot them on a wide-angle lens, their feet are going to seem kind of big and ominous. They won't look right, unless that was specifically what you were after. If you shoot them on a long lens, then their feet and their head and body are all going to look proportionally correct. Same thing goes for, like, let's say you had an actor sitting at a table in a restaurant, and you had people walking between them and camera. Well, a, long, a wide lens will make those people seem ominous, like bigger than you want. A long lens will show them correctly as you would expect if you were there in real life. Long lenses also magnify the background in a different way. They cut stuff out. And here's how that can help you. For example, I shot some scenes of reckoning outside at some historical societies. And even though the buildings were 19th century and old, there was signage and stuff that wasn't 19th century. So you can either go through the hassle of taking the signage down temporarily, or if you're, since you're outside and you have the space to back up from your subject, you can use a long lens. And what would that do? Well, let's say this is an ultra wide lens and this is a ultra long lens. And I'm I'm out there at the historical society, and I want my field of view, I want it to be a shot where I see the actor from the waist up, all right? If I got close enough to have that framing, that field of view with the wide lens, I'm going to see more in the background than I would see with the same framing waist up uh, with the long lens. If I, if I have the space and I can back away from my talent and get that same shot, I'm going to see less of the surrounding background for how these, how the distortion in a long lens works. Hey, if you like this training and you're an aspiring filmmaker, specifically you want to direct movies, I highly recommend you check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co. In a nutshell, I'm teaching you how to be a filmmaker from development through post-production. I teach you how to do it all so that you're unstoppable, as Robert Rodriguez says. I've seen directors held back because of a lack of knowledge, and Write and Direct addresses that. It also sidesteps the crazy expense of going to tra traditional film schools. Because if you do that and then jump into the industry, you're going to realize something. Nobody hires you based on your education. And it's a sobering fact if you spent all of your money on that education. Write and Direct teaches you how to make movies, how to do it right, for a fraction of the cost of traditional training. Hope to see you there, writedirect.co. And if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon.